Hello, hello, and hello. I throw the little scratches with all this comment going on. <laughs> Welcome back to the Family Fortune. It's me, your girl, Ashana, and over there hiding. It's it. Malcolm. And we have a very, very, very <laughs> special guest with us today. I'm going to just let her take it. Oh, my take it. goodness. I know, right? It was just so much to talk about. So I'm just like, I don't even want to mess up one little single thing of all the accomplishments that you have done. It's going to be brief. <laughs> <laughs> I am um, Dr. Alatoria Cranford. Come on, say it again, doctor. Dr. Alatoria Cranford. I do have a doctorate in philosophy mm-hmm. in urban higher education from Jackson State University. But I am first an alum of Payne College right here in Augusta, Georgia. Come on. Um, I've been in higher education 14 years now. Oh, wow. So even my business wraps around that whole entity of higher education, helping students transition, and not just the students, but the parents as well. <laughs> being, a, being a first-generation student, I've, I've learned through experience. And then serving that same population over these last 14 years at, like, what, four inch, I'm at my fourth HBCU. Yeah, I see a lot of changes, a lot take place. What has that experience been like for you? Um, My greatest reward is when the students find that aha moment, mm-hmm. or when the parent says thank you, because mm. <laughs> they didn't know, but there's, because there are many parents that try to tell their student what to do, tell them what to major in, but the student has no love, <laughs> no like for it. Mm-hmm. It's just something that's popular from maybe where they're from. Or right. someone in their family have done, but over the years, the student need changes, and the institutions also have to keep up. Okay. So it's different. Um, the population now, <laughs> the new student, um, they are extremely different. It's like I don't, I don't have another term for it. Without different being is good. Rude. I, think, I think that's the <laughs> word I've seen banning about a lot of these different. Mm-hmm. This new generation, um, not just Gen Alpha, but. Mm-hmm. Gen Z and it's 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 it, a mix. It's 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 yeah different. And so is in, a good in word. my current position at um, Alabama A and M, I serve as the director of the honors program. So I don't experience the first gen as much as I do now. Uh-huh. Well, it's in a different aspect. So most of our students are international. Oh wow! So they come. They're extremely smart, but the only thing they really need are probably like resources. Mm-hmm. And not financial because they're smart, so that schools pay for. So it's personal items, you know. Oh wow! The first gen serving is like, in like the freshman academy or something like that. They need guidance, guidance, guidance. like choosing options, um, decisions making, pros and cons. Do you ever have students that come in and they don't necessarily want to go to school, but they will force to go to school and? So how do you help them navigate <clears throat> that? Like being in school and that's really not what they really want to do. Absolutely. Um, often. <laughs> Try to find the best way to help them communicate it to their parent. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, with uh, in higher education, FERPA, we're not allowed to really discuss student business. Okay, <laughs> wait. It? What's FERPA? You know what FERPA is? <laughs> no. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> It's like uh, an actual document government form with policy where we can't st- share student information unless the uh, student allows permission. Okay. So if you were to call me and say, hey, I need to know what John Doe grades look like. Not like I, I was when I was in school. I, I, can, like I, could, I cannot share that. Well, yeah. they're adults at that point. Well, yes. Yeah, they, they make their own decisions. Right. So. They are adults, but you know. And I'm glad it's changed because, like I said, I used to have to tell Daphne, that's my mama, <laughs> all the time, hey, hey, hey. Yeah, it's like it's an actual law. So, but with that, although the student may give permission for their parent to look at it in front of them, mm-hmm. they can always go back to the office and change it. Yeah. Because, again, they are an adult at this moment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And so those are conversations we have to have. And sometimes many higher education professionals like myself will mm-hmm. hide behind FERPA any minute. Uh, I'm unable to discuss that with you. Yeah. That's as, bad, so crazy. As, bad, as bad as I want to share, <laughs> I am unable to discuss that with you. I, I remember one instance where um, a friend of mine, they knew uh, 
their student, a student was at the institution I was at. Mm-hmm. And they was like, yeah, apparently they banned from this or they got, you know, got into some trouble. I just want to know what's going on. I go to my students first. Right. Because they get all the tea. That's good. <laughs> That's good. I had video in like three minutes. <laughs> That's good. Of what the student did. And so they were like, well, what's happening? I look up the student academic aspect first. And in my mind, I was like, okay, and no need to advocate for this one because they going home anyway. They got all Fs. <laughs> Oh, wow. But I couldn't say that to, you know, the family. Like, that's between them and their students to have that conversation. But mm-hmm. I'm like, y'all can go. They was like, well, who need to talk to? Whoever said they were banned, go start with them. Oh. So, you know, I was unable to say, like, they're that. not coming back anyway because they have all else. Two semesters straight of Fs. Did they even go to college? No, seriously. <laughs> Apparently not because they WWE out there. <laughs> <laughs> they did not go to Slamming college. bodies. <laughs> so... Um, you say you've been at four HBCUs. I'm trying mm-hmm. to see if mine's going to be named. I don't think so, but I'm ever hopeful. Which one? So Payne? Probably not. <sighs> Payne College. Uh, oh, Fort Baton. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I remember. Yeah. I remember. Southern <laughs> University, Baton Rouge, and uh, Fort Valley State University. Yeah, we're and not going to talk about that. Currently, Alabama A&M. So we're not going to talk about yeah. that school. Unfortunately, all of them was... didn't make the cut. <laughs> All Benny. How y'all say? All Benny. <laughs> <laughs> now, was that by choice of sticking with HBCUs, or was that just kind of what opened up to you? In the beginning, yes. Mm-hmm. It has always been HBCUs. Um, but lately, I feel like I need to step away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Only for the sake that I think uh, ad- adjacent higher ed roles will be more beneficial than being on the campus. Mm-hmm. because there are people in positions making decisions that they have no idea and it's happening on the campus. Mm. So it's almost like almost like the church. You know, they like to compare the black college to the black church. Everybody want to see the pastor. Everybody want to see the president. Mm-hmm. We shouldn't always see the president, but we should see him, you know, in some form or fashion as it relates to support and advocate, advocacy. Mm-hmm. So um, lately it's just been a lot of decision making happening. Mm-hmm. That doesn't look good in many cases. So having people in positions, whether it be Women's CF, Thurgood Marshall College Fund, College Board, SRED in Atlanta, advocating and working on policy for this space, mm-hmm. it's going to always look good. Yeah, but, you know, <clears throat> growing up, it, and I can speak, it was the thing in the black community <laughs> to go to an HBCU mm-hmm. when, at the time when I went, it wasn't necessarily a good thing as far as my education and further on because I, I walked away with a master's degree mm-hmm. but ended up in the military. And that's mm-hmm. because even though some of the educational aspects were there, a lot of the things that you may find even um, at a private college mm-hmm. or one of the you know, the big four or what have you mm-hmm. is like the internship opportunities, Absolutely. the work education opportunities. So it was more about the black experience Absolutely. when the campus versus what's going to happen once I graduate. Mm-hmm. I'm glad to see a lot of things have changed because when I went, it was Auburn State College. Now it's Auburn State University. Many of y'all alumni, y'all like to say to hold on with it. I got. I went to college. I went to college. I did go to college. <laughs> I went to the college, not the university. I hate limiting them. What? I like. I liked it because it was it. a smaller mm-hmm. unit. I mean, it was smaller and it was more tight knit, and so the classes were actually smaller, mm-hmm. and you got a little bit more one on one with a lot of the professors that taught there. And then, of course, I still have lifelong friends mm-hmm. from way back when. Um, I, it's I always been, a plus. I've only been back once. And I was like, oh, that's okay. you go back this year. Wow. <laughs> you got to go back. There was one point I couldn't even get back to paying college because of work. UNCF always had to go to a conference. And then I was in school for those few years, mm-hmm. missing every homecoming. But when that homecoming came up and I was there, not missing one. <laughs> 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 okay, so we going to actually, we don't got to wait till no, now. But no, this no, is good it. information, is good, good information good. about the college life experience. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about how students and their parents or guardians and whomever can, you know, start to get prepared mm-hmm. financially mm-hmm. for college if college mm-hmm. is where they want to go up. And when I say college, I don't mean just a four-year. Absolutely. I mean, you know, it could be a junior sleep, college. People sleep on a junior and community mm-hmm. college. It's real bad. So uh, let's talk about some of the things. Like, so 
Preparing for, well, financially for college, it looks different for many people. Mm -hmm. But at the starting point is understanding what it is the student or mm -hmm. child <laughs> um, has an interest in. Because I've seen many students matriculate through that first semester or first year as a whole. No idea. They just hear because my mom would say this is out the high school. And they went to college just to say, they, hey, I went to college, but they ain't doing nothing. Right. <laughs> so that's a waste of money, especially when you're, you know, filling out the FAFSA, which we'll talk about a little later, um, and taking out loans in some cases. So with me being a first-gen student, I didn't pay anything for undergrad. My paying college experience is free awesome. for the sake wow. of my academics and sports. So Be smart, Is though. that something new? Or mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I received money for my grades as well as my athletics as well. <laughs> so I got no. I, 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 I keep first gen. I was talking about no, the no. First. first generation is a. I'm I'm a student of parents that did not go to college. Oh, okay. So I thought so they didn't they didn't graduate. You know. So but now my mom has two degrees. So awesome. I was love it. were you the inspiration? I mean, I like to say I put a little rap. <laughs> come on, come on. No, I thought that you were. Ref I knew what it meant, mm -hmm. but I thought you were referring to some sort oh, of the scholarship, like a scholarship or so, yeah, an that opportunity. Could, that could be a thing. So when it comes to scholarships. You know, we'll talk about different types. Demographic could be a, a okay. search point. Um, but as far as saving for college, it's just like saving for anything else. I remember growing up, my mom used to be like, oh, you need to save your money. You can tell me all day to save, but how you do it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it wasn't until, like, when I got to college or adulting for real mm -hmm. <laughs> that I learned what saving looks like. Um, saving it to me then, when she say save your money, I'm saving it till I go to the store the next time. Exactly. <laughs> Versus, you know, trying to build a pundit. So, um for parents, uh, you have to make it a priority. Mm -hmm. um, like we pay outside, we put a percentage aside to build that college fund. If you know you want to support or don't want to take out loans, or if early is better. Um, many like to think it has to be senior year that we should be looking for these things. Oh no, that's too or late. Or junior year, but honestly, you can start looking as soon as they hit that ninth grade, eighth grade, because those scholarships that are coming around, they're coming around the same time frame every year. Mm -hmm. So if I'm at a high school and I notice, oh, this person keep getting this scholarship or this is what's happening, I'm making a list of those things. Right. So parents, when they students are at these awards, now we're in that season where we're April. Mm -hmm. So They're right, about to start happening. right now they are awarding dollars. Mm -hmm. So anyone with a child that's a junior, sophomore, need to be making note of what all these scholarships are because mm -hmm. <laughs> they're going to come around again. Um, and they normally the deadline is normally March 1st mm -hmm. for them to apply for them. There's a... Uh, I know you know Jaina. Um, she uh, mm -hmm. hosts a page on Facebook called uh, Proud Parent Foundation. Mm -hmm. And that's a good resource uh, locally for those who follow her. Because if I see it, I post and she, scholarships absolutely. and stuff in there. Plus, there's also another site that I was on DM about. Um, it's called College Funding Hero. Mm -hmm. And it's just a listing mm -hmm. of scholarships, when the deadline is, and what. And the that, application there process. There are so is. many handles, so, especially even on Instagram, that people need to follow. Mm -hmm. When I say they are given A through Z or one through ten and more, how to look for it. Here are new scholarships with deadline. They're actually posting what the scholarship is. This is the deadline. Mm -hmm. Like so, the people that I uh, consult with externally with my business, I always share those links. Like, hey, follow them because they're posting current scholarships. Yes, mm -hmm. that's not my primary, but it is a part of my my window when I'm communicating with people. But I know we have partnerships, so I just share the information. And it'd be like 10 scholarships. And it seems like they're posting scholarships every other day. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like there's no reason to not find anything. And the money is out there. It is so much money out there. I have learned that many people are just lazy with applying because it forces you to write something. But the key is, <laughs> if you write a standard um, essay, mm -hmm about you, your goals, what do you want to become, how will this money assist you? That's all you're sharing with everybody. However, many people miss scholarship opportunities as well because they don't follow the instructions. Mm -hmm. if, the, if the deadline has passed, the deadline, if they wanted one single file, not eight different files, they're not even going to look at your information. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's that tedious. That's one of the things that I've noticed. Like I um, volunteered once at the Junior Achievement Discovery mm -hmm. Center, um, and I'm the kids are very smart. They're so smart. They're so tech savvy mm -hmm. and everything else. But while they're tech savvy because their fingers move fast, they're not reading. And I just sit there and I'm like, did you actually read what you just 
there. Just I don't, you're just moving ahead, which is okay, but did you read? Because now you messed this up. Mm. Or you no longer qualify for this loan because you didn't bother to read the application. Yeah. So that's a key institute when applying for the scholarships. Make sure you read. Being fast. <laughs> Make sure you read. <laughs> you have to read because some may, may not even want an essay. They may want a three-minute video, one-minute video. Mm -hmm. uh, they want a poem. I mean, it varies, like, what they ask for. it. Um, so it's just paying attention to the details, the deadlines, submitting how they want to see. If they want PDF, do PDF. If they want PNG, use PNG, mm. <laughs> whatever takes place, like, to the detail, because that's how they really um, sort out yeah. goals and no's. Now, would you recommend to the parents that they don't do it for them? Mm, they need to do it together. Because many of your students, they get to the campus, the parent be like, uh, go ask this. Then the student come back to the parent and say, well, they said, who was they? They don't know what even office they was in. And it really becomes a headache. Even when they come to our offices asking for information, when they said, I'm supposed to come here, who is they? Like, mm -hmm. what does that mean? So I think they should do it together because if there is an issue or if they need some clarity, they're only going to get the right answer if they ask the right question, which yeah. is where many of them fail. So mm -hmm. you want to do it together, but make sure they understand what's taking place. But if you're the one, I've heard parents say, well, I got to do this because I know they're not going to do it. Well, who graduate? Are, <laughs> are they graduating? <laughs> you know? And I, I hear it often, like, I have to do it because they're not going to ABC. So that also let us know because we get to talk on our end, too. That means you're doing their work, too. Mm -hmm. That's what I don't know. We won't have to ignore the lawn guy. That's right outside. I don't hear him in my uh, headphones. I do. <laughs> but that's okay. You know I got extra special here. <laughs> I got extra special here. But so, yeah. Thank you for that. So, FAFSA, you mentioned that earlier. Mm -hmm. oh, now, what the heck is that? Um, <laughs> it's a free <laughs> application for federal student aid. So, FAFSA is a must to complete. Mm -hmm. um, Something else that's new. Yeah, it is a must to complete if you want to receive free aid. Mm -hmm. And that aid is not always scholarships. I know there's Hill Grant for some. Um, Hope scholarship that may still exist in some areas, but it depends on what is taking place in whatever landscape or area that they're in. So, enrolling in college, if your FAFSA is not completed, the institution may not move forward helping to get advice or enroll. Oh, wow. They'll see it as an intent to not enroll if your FAFSA is completed. Or if you show up like, yeah, I'm coming, but the FAFSA isn't complete, they've sit you to a computer, you got to do this first before you can go to the next step. So it's really just a way to gain aid. <laughs> and it, does, it doesn't hurt to apply. It does. And people think because you apply for FAFSA, you're automatically signing up for loans. Loans could be an option once they, you know, go through all of your, finance, your parents' finances or whatever. But at the end of the day, it's really just giving you options. You choose. I see. That's so totally different from when I went through. Mm -hmm. We used to have to go to the financial aid office with this little thick package. Mm -hmm. They still got to do that. You said they don't do it no more? <laughs> well, they don't read it? <laughs> with the triple carbons, and then, you, you know. get a sheet. You get a sheet. Everybody get a sheet. <laughs> and, you know, you had, yeah. so, but, you know, I stopped. Mm -hmm. But since I already got my grade, but, you know, I was time on my name on the body mm -hmm. line. <laughs> And so when I was an undergrad, I knew that I didn't have to pay for anything. So when they sent that little balance to the house, mm -hmm. I was like, go to the financial aid office now. She wanted to be on the phone when I went there. <laughs> yep. So you have some parents like that. And I was like, all right, mom, ask now. Like, she yelling on the phone. Mm. Like, hold on. <laughs> but, you know, you I mean, it's good to have some parents that are aware. And that's why I said they need to do those things together because the student may miss something. And mm -hmm. there are many students, hey, they said I got a schedule, so I'm good to go. But they don't know the back end, which may, it may have a balance. And we can get into it. Well, oh, I know about that. I know that hasn't changed. The way they <laughs> handle it may have changed, but yeah, you have a balance, balance after a certain balance. part. Um, excuse me. Thank you for being in attendance, but mm -hmm. you now have to vacate. Mm -hmm. and, but did y'all have payment plans? Was that a thing? I don't know. Yeah. You know, I, was, I was a, a thing now. I was a victim of the uh, of the student loans, and that's only because. Mm -hmm. I was, mm -hmm. Oh. And not because I actually needed it, but you know, <laughs> and that's why. My master's had me a victim. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get it done quick. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, they have payment plans now, so uh, several options to oh, consider wow. paying for college. So 
you fill out the FAFSA, uh, and you didn't need to do it early. This year, they opened it late. Yeah, I saw something. Because um, they had some on. changes. Mm -hmm. So even for some institutions, their um, date has been pushed back to say that, hey, this is the date of intent for the okay. college. Um, Question. When you, when you say payment plans, what, what do you mean by that? Um, because I'm thinking about when you get on a loan over time, you pay. That's a payment plan right there. When you pay back the loan, but are you talking about like not getting a loan and just paying the school monthly or something no, like you, that? Yeah, your loan is included with interest. The mm -hmm. payment plan, if your bill is eight hundred dollars, oh, okay, paying two hundred dollars to the eight hundred is gone mm -hmm. for that semester. Because in many cases, they would not. Not many. Most cases. Well, all cases, I would say. If you have a balance at the end of the Say I, say I have a balance at the end of this spring term, they would not let me register for summer or fall. Because mm -hmm. this term has to be clear. Yeah. And one thing parents want to be mindful of, when your student says, oh, my balance is gone, the school could have waived the balance just so they can register, but they still have that balance once they don't register for the classes. So they want to be, they want to make, be sure oh, to wow. circle back to make sure the account really Like get me a receipt. <laughs> make sure the account says zero. So, so just to be like, hey, I don't see the balance anymore. Okay, that's so, good. Some institutions that's can good. waive it just so they can register if they're lower balances. Um, just being honest. But you always want to circle back and make sure that it is a clear balance, just in case. Because some schools have, like, emergency funding, so they do clear. Oh, wow. But you just want to make sure it's receipt, like you said, <laughs> if it says zero. Receipt. College is so expensive. No, it really is. Oh, my goodness. I um, thought it was high one. I was going and it keeps increasing. So outside of the FAFSA, you know, you get grants and scholarships you don't pay back with any loans that you choose. You got to pay back at some point. Yeah. Um, well, some people choose. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pay back. It's just like a regular bill, but you want to try to your best to have either scholarships or grants because you don't have to pay those back mm -hmm. or using savings of some sort. Um, other avenues for scholarships, uh, looking at yourself, let's I'm left-handed. There may be a left-handed scholarship out there. Demographics. Wow. Being a That's widow, a single mother. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, I heard there's a book. Having a single parent. There, there are many demographics to consider when you're applying for scholarships. I think there's a book, and I don't know how often they update it. It's like a guide to scholarships. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like you said the A to Z and the one that 100 mm -hmm. listing of all the available scholarships. Mm -hmm. And it's... Uh, I saw that one time, and it's divided by state and whatever. Mm -hmm. So I was like, "Wow!" And it was a thing. It was so thick. yeah. There, there, there are so many um, aspects to consider, especially mm -hmm. looking at yourself. Um, my father's deceased. There could be a scholarship for that. Mm -hmm. Green eyes. Who knows? Could have a scholarship for that. You know. Mm -hmm. um, but people create scholarships based off of their set parameters. So, like a scholarship at Payne College. Mm -hmm. For me, it would be a female interested in STEM or biology. It could have to be from South Carolina. I can make it that that strict. Mm -hmm. You got to have gray hair at the mm -hmm. age of 20. <laughs> yeah, I want to be that precise, you know. It's, they create the scholarships to whatever stipulation they desire. So you want to look at you first when it comes to searching for scholarships. And then secondly, you want to look at the major. Mm -hmm. um, the campus, the schools, they have their general financial aid sites uh, with a list of scholarships, general. Mm -hmm. However, if the student is aware of the major that they're interested in, those departments have additional money in some cases. Mm -hmm. So although I may get my academic scholarship from paying because I have 3.5, mm -hmm. that money's coming. But I major in biology. The biology department has another scholarship because I'm your bio major or a female. Yeah. Wow. The money's like, out there. You want to look. Money, you, just got, you just got to look. You just got to look. Fill out that fast for <laughs> Read. The FAFSA is a starter kit. <laughs> <laughs> Read what is required for the The FAFSA discussion. is the starter kit, and I can't stress that enough. It's the starter kit, not just for funding, but just to completing being enrolled in college. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And not letting you move forward out of it completely. And some other fundings, um, opportunity out there, or savings mm -hmm. opportunity, is 529 plan. Mm -hmm. uh, I had and you a, don't hear a lot of people talk about that. I had a 529 plan I started for my son um, when he was little. Mm -hmm. And they had this site, I don't even know if it's active anymore, it's called New Promise. And it was mm -hmm. at the beginning of when online shopping, well, my son's mm -hmm. wrong. <laughs> when the online shopping was becoming a thing, mm -hmm. so it was like you shop online through the New Promise, Promise. link. 
and um, the percentage and the percentage would go through. So I saved a lot, and then you can invest it into a five two nine mm-hmm. plan. Uh, and so I saved a lot doing that. Now, thank goodness, I found out. Uh, well, at, and at the time, you can only use the five two nine plan mm-hmm. for college. So I so we don't hear anything about that now. You had, but thankfully, where I hadn't invested, mm-hmm. they they um, created an opportunity where you can switch it over. Because I knew by then that he was not going to go to school, mm-hmm. that that was not going to be his uh, path forward. Mm-hmm. So I was able to shift that money over. Oh, wow. Otherwise, it would have been lost because it's used right. uh, primarily for oh, education. Well, that's a plus. Yes, and I was like, dang, because I was about ready to choke him. I'm like, <laughs> dude, <laughs> I have no money. It's like, this is <laughs> money. Uh, but yeah, so it was, uh, those are things that a lot, a lot of people don't even look mm-hmm. into. And I think a lot of the institutions now that offer the 529 plans give you the option mm-hmm. of being able to switch it over if at some point you decide they, not to decide not to the education. You get that over? And beyond that, uh, once a student is enrolled, I mean, there's some other avenues for extra funding, mm-hmm. uh, whether it be work study. Mm, work study. Yep. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> work work study was in the gym. <laughs> Why do mine was with the football? <laughs> um, so work study is one, but uh, people also oftentimes miss if they were running like student leadership positions. Sometimes mm-hmm. your SGA, uh, Royal Court, they all get mm-hmm. stipends. It's like they get paid to lead. Um, they do that too. Uh, I was never a resident assistant. That's, I did you know, that for my when I was being that's, RA. That's how I got my master's. I was a resident assistant. Ooh. Hey, it totally paid for my master's. You know, RA, that's another like campus job. But <laughs> outside of work study, some departments may have extra funding to hire people. Mm-hmm. So these are questions y'all just have to ask. Um, but also understanding the important thing about scholarships, you should never stop looking for them. People get excited. Oh, I got this for the first year. You still got three more years or <laughs> three plus. You know, it depends on how it works. Yeah. But you have to understand with scholarships, especially when you get external scholarships or any scholarships from anybody, um, how is it split? So if I get a $10,000 scholarship, people think, oh, it's just for semester one. Now that 10000 might be over all four years. It could mm-hmm. just be over the first two years. Mm-hmm. You have to understand the stipulations of the scholarship that you receive. Mm-hmm. Which is which could be misleading um, if they don't know to ask what percentage this was covered. I scared. I scared. No, I don't. I don't think I even thought about that either. Mm-hmm. So you know, it could be split over a certain time frame. So you have to understand that as well. And we have the um, CS Hamilton Scholarship mm-hmm. here, at mm-hmm. Tabernacle, and uh, I was fussed mm-hmm. <laughs> at Deacon Pope, who was like mm-hmm. in charge of um, collating all the documents mm-hmm. and paperwork. I'm like. I like, wouldn't pick that. And but you know, our mm-hmm. thing is, we're going to give you the scholarship anyway. But I'm like, they're not even, the kids aren't even invested. Why are you going to submit your photo? Because you have to submit a photo. Okay. And you sitting up in the car, leaning like this. Oh, wow. And I'm like, can't stand it. And I'm like, oh. like no. I was sending, I said, why are you send it back? And she, she's nicer than mm-hmm. me. So I'm like, that's probably why I'm not on the committee. And, <laughs> and look, and we get them right on in college. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> To the point now that actually some of our programming involves creating a professional profile, Good. taking mm, his shots, yes. because I know that yes. many of the students have no idea. No idea. Right. And, and as some long of the staff as staff don't either, but that's another. As story. long as we keep accepting it, they're going to keep, keep doing. Mm-hmm. We, I, I can hear somebody now. I turn right in like this, and they did. <laughs> you know how? And they do, do. or they, you know, ladies. You know, mm-hmm. so when all your assets in, oh, wow. in, in, in a photo for scholarships and college, <laughs> no, 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 let's just do better. Yeah. <laughs> so that that's a part of the professional etiquette that we try to tackle in the first year of college. Yeah. That they may not understand or grasp in the moment. I think I saw the title. Uh, what's the title of the, of the, uh, of the uh, mm-hmm. class that you teach? Something about uh, college is not the oh, third. It's not 13th grade. Like 13th it. grade, wow. I like that. Yeah, that is my ongoing tag for when I talk about transitioning. Yeah. And that's for the student and the parent. Mm-hmm. Like, parent, we want you to support, but we need them to grasp it because you need them to be. So, yeah, it's not 13th grade, and that goes, you know, making the transition personally, professionally, academically, finding friends, knowing that, hey, no one is calling your phone. Or setting an alarm to wake you up. That's on you. Mm-hmm. Professor's not going to track you down. I'm like, hey, I missed you. I missed this assignment. I need you to turn in. Mm-hmm. It's a zero. 
to zero. It's up to you to go in and advocate for yourself. Self-advocacy is a big thing, too, mm -hmm. that they are learning you know, within the classroom. I mean, of course, they go march and do silent protests outside. <laughs> yeah, they call it and that's for student engagement, but for the classroom aspect, it looks different. That college experience is something awful. Um, I joke mm -hmm. when I say this, but I'm actually being dead serious. I don't remember my freshman year a lot because, you know, I was experiencing college mm -hmm. life. However, I thank God every day that even though I don't remember a lot of what was going on, mm -hmm. I never missed class. And I had all them eight o'clock classes and I, my grit point never, never dropped. I was, I was living the dream, living the life. And then that, you know, being an athlete, I don't know, my freshman year, they were like, yeah, we went to so-and-so for our new school orientation. Like, I think I was at practice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I didn't really have like a true first year because being an athlete. So those are things to consider as well. Mm -hmm. uh, when you want to do athletics, you have to meet a certain GPA. They have a certain test score in and outside of the classroom. You have to communicate with your professors. Other than that, they may drop you from the class. Mm -hmm. And you may lose scholarships if you don't have mm -hmm. the desired credit hours to meet that actual funding. Mm -hmm. So you have many students like, I don't have 15 credit hours, which is a norm. 15 credit hours is like the minimum or the safe space. So if a student does drop, then now down to maybe 12 credit hours, they're still full time. Mm -hmm. But 15 to finish is the goal. 15 per semester should meet every credit hour or total number credit hour for graduation. And then if you drop, it takes you to 12, you might pick up a class somewhere or at some point. But also keep it in mind, some institutions let you let you take up to 18 at whatever that standard price me. is, <laughs> at whatever that standard cost is. But once you go past 18, it's an additional dollar cost. Mm -hmm. So when you're calculating the cost of college, look at your in-state, out-of-state, on-campus, off-campus. And if you're online, Sometimes those fees are just different as well. So you want to have to look at all of that. I was an 18 hour student. They were turned off the cheap. Yeah, me too. Overachiever. Overachiever. Okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Overachiever. Nothing wrong with that. But 18 is a lot. You have any other questions? No. Nah, my Your questions haven't answered. <laughs> Your mind over there spinning like Man, it's showing up here. I got it. You didn't have somebody to graduate, do you? Mm, no. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> I got a 13-year-old, well, soon to be 13-year-old, and I got to get her life together because, you know, Davidson, that's the school she goes to, mm -hmm. it's very different from public school. Well, from when I was in middle school, it's mm -hmm. very different. And she's really on her own out there. Mm -hmm. And I get in conversations with her teachers and look at her grades, and it's like she's doing the work. Mm -hmm. She's not turning it in because she's expecting somebody to tell her to turn him in or to do this or do that. She's not that. And now she's 12. I get it. I, that's something that has to be taught to mm -hmm. her. But like you talking about all this stuff, like, oh my gosh, she's going to be out here by herself and I can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just something that as a parent, you got to think about like, yeah, it's not 13th grade. You let that child go and they are in this mm -hmm. world now and in college and they have to navigate a lot of that mm -hmm. stuff by themselves. And so, yeah, so somebody like you that said, hey, I can't talk to you about that. What was it called? What was that possibly <laughs> called? Furfa. 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 No, no talk to me. That's your yeah. child. But no, and that's my, our safe That's our safe yeah. we, can't, we can't say that. So it's, it's important for parents to have the conversation before they even get to 12th grade about yeah. advocacy. Uh, well, how would you resolve this issue if you have this issue currently in, at Davidson? Mm -hmm. They didn't tell me to turn to work in, so what do we need to do about it? So if you talk talk slash teach through those scenarios and kind of prepares them for the dialogue and the advocacy in college. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people like to think that advocacy is just marching side by side, mm -hmm. kumbaya. But you have to be able to, in many cases, professors do <laughs> be wrong sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> They may miss the mark. And when I say miss the mark, because they have so many rosters. Right. But you turn your work in, like, no, I submitted this. I always tell my students keep everything in black and white. Yep. And you email. Yep. If you following up, following for the last email you sent, hey, I'm just checking in on this, what I sent yeah. two weeks ago. <laughs> that teacher or professor is human, too. They can Absolutely. make a mistake. Absolutely, and they, they make errors, and we make errors and make mistakes. So it's, I'm like, dang, I didn't miss that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's your grade, so you want to be able to advocate for it properly. So with her being, what you said, middle school? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a good point for her to check in now, and whatever her interest may be, uh, mm -hmm. it's not too early to do shadowing, asking questions, visiting colleges. It's never too early for that. And it's, and it's 
don't know if she's old enough for it. For the well, college road trip they're doing that. Uh-huh. No, she's not old enough for it. But what we do, uh, we recently did this. We took her to Georgia Southern. Oh, boy. And just to see her, let her see what a college actually looks mm-hmm. like. She's used to AU, so she doesn't really think of it. She just thinks of the medical college because mm-hmm. that's what she knows it as. Right. Uh, but we took her to Georgia Southern. And so she's kind of, she's like, oh, I want to go to Georgia Southern. I said, calm down. There's other colleges out there. <laughs> So probably the greatest experience for, you know, parents that are trying to help their student or their child find their way is to tend, to attend the actual high school days that colleges have because you mm-hmm. get to see everything in one day. Mm-hmm. The academics, the athletics, the school spirit, professors, mm-hmm. the president, mm-hmm. the actual um, energy that the school gives. Every campus has a different vibe, so I wouldn't just say I'm going to school because I like and this is the season, kind of the mm-hmm. season for that between, you know, spring and summer. I had I just sent a friend at least by eight of them. Hades are coming up and they might be all back to back or overlap. I just got to choose which one to attend. And some of them are free. It's just getting to them. Mm-hmm. So those high school days or whatever day they call it, senior days, mm-hmm. they don't really put an age cap on those. So middle schoolers be there, youth groups be there, high school students be there, those that consider the transfer be there. <laughs> You know, that's that's a good thing. Why don't you look into that? <clears throat> so, any, that's a lot of information. That was process. a lot. It was, was a lot. Any lot closing thoughts or um, advice to what have you? Um, a closing thought, I would say to utilize strongly your dual enrollment because that could also minimize yes. the cost of college because you yes. could be done in three years mm-hmm. versus four. Yes. So, taking advantage of that early is a plus. Most schools offer, most high schools mm-hmm. have that now. Right? Mm-hmm. So the dual enrollment, and even if they're trying to be on a fast track, there's so many, um, I guess, other aspects to look at when you're trying to finish quickly. Mm-hmm. So students that may want to take a course at another institution, all you got to do is just make sure that your school will accept their credit. Mm-hmm. If I'm going home for the summer, I want to see if these these classes are going to transfer to my degree, and it helps minimize time. But again, you're paying for that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so as a closing remark, the money is there. Mm-hmm. Look for the money. Apply yourself. Write about yourself. Know what you want to do, um, and continue to search for them because uh, they do exist. Awesome. They do exist. The money is there. <laughs> you hear that? The money. The money is it's there. Here. Yeah. Make sure you go apply for it. Wow. Thank you so much. You know, like my mind is still spinning. I keep forgetting how long ago I went to school and how things changed. <laughs> oh, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> but so. I, Families, students, make sure you listen to this episode and bookmark everything. Take notes. Take notes. <laughs> so we thank Dr. Grant for coming on and providing us all this wisdom. Mm-hmm. And until the next time we meet, I'm Rashana. This is Malcolm. And I'm Dr. Cranford. And this is the Family Fortune. See ya. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.